Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again. I've got a follow-up video for you of the Wild Strike champion on the Incursion Flashback League, which at this point is almost level 93, and it has taken on all endgame content. However, for the big stuff, the Uber Elder, I did pull out Molten Strike because it just made a lot more sense, especially uh, when I'm just trying to get the content down and not have my own personal little, let's see if we can do content with a shit skill sort of challenge because wild strike is quite amazing in the clear and it is very fun to play but ultimately for the single target there's nothing too special about it and it can clear most things and it probably could even do an uber elder but it is a lot less comfortable than let's say a molten strike so we have bit of a clear clips over here and uh yeah like i said it was very fast it got through uh maps very quickly the whirling blade speed is insane and if you get the additional chain helm enchant then it's probably going to be an absolute monster however this is without the helm enchant and it's still way more than enough clear speed than i ever need so i didn't bother going for that and uh, up to this point and what you're seeing on the character, it is still two wasp nests, which is, you know, one C per item. By the time I got to Shaper and uh, the tier 16 Guardians, I did actually craft a couple of new claw upgrades within about two, three exalts or so. And uh, I got fairly lucky on those. This, however, is a tier 13 Guardian and Elder run with Wild Strike with the Wasp Nest Claws. You did still have quite a lot of single target even with the Wasp Nest because uh, Champion's fairly strong and so is a Shroud of the Lightless comboed with all of that. So the damage was still pretty respectable and... Um, the character can do just about all endgame content, I should say, uh, based off of not a huge amount of gear. Then I did get uh, some claw upgrades and uh, started to try and test Molten Strike as well. But this is all just off of Wasp Nest, and uh, if you pop Adrenaline before you start the fight, then you do get quite a large boost for most of the tough parts of the fight. As you can see, it's going to be up most of the time. The damage there, it's nothing too crazy because it's not really a you know tier one single target skill. It's just a good clear skill with respectable single target in the end. However, clearing up portals, things like that on this type of phase is uh, really nice with Wild Strike because it does double as an insane um, clear trash clearing ability while still being pretty decent at single target and ultimately if you really want some single target in the build you can just chuck some vile double strike in and uh, still have a very solid clear build plus some real good single target if you just you know didn't really want to um, resort to something like molten strike so this by this point i do have slightly better claws and by slightly better i mean like 30 40 percent more damage at this point thanks to the claws i crafted and you can see tier 16 guardian does take quite a lot of damage you can see i'm running around procking adrenaline every now and again and uh, it's respectable it's still nothing quite close to molten strike but definitely respectable damage and then i managed to do one shaper run on the wild strike before i started to um look into procking uber elder but based off of pure wild strike damage i wasn't really looking into uber elder it isn't until i started to mess around with molten strike that i thought hey i should take this character to uber elder so take that for what it's worth i really don't think something like wild strike that has a real up close melee range uh, is something you should do for uber elder whereas molten strike still pretty up close and personal but it can also stand back a bit with the amount of balls it throws out and uh, the life gain on hit mechanic you have so you're not pure melee you're not pure up close and personal and you have a shitload more sustain and this is what molten strike looks like these days there were a few little buffs here or there to the clear speed because the balls now drop faster and all in all i actually did quite a few maps with just pure molten strike and it's very respectable as a clear skill uh, these days not just as a single target i used to hate it as a clear skill because it did take way too long for those balls to drop at this point you could actually play molten strike i think quite comfortably as a pure uh, both clear and single target skill now the clear is uh, not going to be anywhere near as good as wild strike but it is pretty safe and it is fairly strong the single target however is much better and it's also much safer we're talking probably twice the amount of single target damage and then molten strike with the right amount of balls and the life gain on hit is going to be about as close to immortal as you can get with the old life gain uh, from vile pact life leech mechanic as seen here against tier 16 eradicator i wanted to put it to the test and basically i chose not to move throughout his attacks and i don't have a lot of um 
defense in the way of you know spell resistance and all that just a wise oak but with the life gain on hit the shitload of balls you drop you can actually basically face tank his attacks and quite a lot of attacks in general throughout these end game bosses so i'll go over some of the last few little gear changes mostly the claws and then give you the full uncut uber elder run now the final gear and most of this character hasn't really changed since the last video, it is just simply I want to go over the Wild Strike uh, setup versus the Molten Strike setup and also the claws I have crafted. So these are the two new claws I managed to craft, one's basically pure elemental and one is um, more of a fizz elemental hybrid. Something like this one is ideally what you're looking for, a bunch of physical damage, some good attack speed, some good crit and then if you can a bit of elemental damage as well. So so this one was crafted, uh, they're both crafted as shaped eye level 83 claws as seen there and you're just looking for some fizz rolls, some attack speed, some crit uh, or some flat Ellie before you regal and then you might get lucky into a you know third regal, uh, third mod and uh, go from there. I then exalted both of these as much as I could and ended up being pretty much like a 30 to 40 percent damage upgrade over wasps nests but I do think wasps nests can take care of all content by themselves it just will obviously be a bit worse than something like this. So that's the claws and um, they're both kind of jank a bit hybrid but they both work for the purpose of the build and and uh, the way we then end up doing Wild Strike versus Molten Strike is, um, let's actually start here. So this is the Molten Strike setup. Um, currently I change nothing in my actual setup besides the few gems and then uh, the two jewels I have. So you just swap around the exact colored setup of Shroud that you have into Molten Strike, Ancestral Call, Multi Strike, Added Cold and Conk Effect. Um, added lightning might be more damage for you than conch effect so uh, keep that in mind depends on how much flat damage you have from the rest of your gear you might be running both of these damage supports instead and sometimes if you really don't like the ancestral calling from molten strike for single target you can drop that for weapon elemental damage or elemental damage with attacks and uh, that means you won't have ancestral call However, Ancestral Call still functions the same way it used to um, with Molten Strike, and that is if you stand back far enough from a target, let's say this is your regular Molten Strike, if you stand just far enough, the Ancestral Call is then attacking from both other angles, you're still getting three lots of Molten Strike balls going off at that target, which does increase, for the most part, your single target, as well as the amount of life gain on hit that you're going to get from those balls. So that's the setup for... Um, pure Molten Strike action and I do trade out two of my jewels for wildfires on the left hand side over here so you just chuck some wildfires in for the additional um, projectiles because that will be a DPS gain and these are the two jewels that I end up losing if you go back to Wild Strike action it's a simple um, two jewel removal process there replace the Wild Strike there the uh, Ellie damage with attacks there and the added lightning there and then you're back into a pure wild strike setup and this type of setup can work for let's say lightning strike um, you can probably go most other melee skills as well even uh, if you really wanted to like a double strike and like I said a double strike instead of the vile lightning strike over here would be a lot stronger and feel a lot better for this type of build but I didn't want to rely on that as a crutch on every single melee build so I just used Vile Lightning Strike and as I mentioned it's pretty shit it's kind of useless but whatever I kept it if you uh, really don't want to use Vile Double Strike like I didn't I'd probably recommend using uh, Vile Haste instead because it this really was kind of useless and didn't do too much in the end and then last thing I'll say is that um, I did also double corrupt my Shroud of the Lightless with um, plus two AoE gems and reduced crit damage from uh, reduced damage from crit strikes. None of the clips in the video had me using this one. Uh, I corrupted it after the Uber Elder run, so by no means necessary to get a sick double corrupt. It's not even that good, it's just gave us plus two on our gem. Um, the Wild Strike itself and the Molten Strike, nothing too big of a deal, but yeah, if you're going to accuse me of having an insane chest, uh, just letting you know, I double corrupted it after the Uber Elder run that I am now going to show you guys. Died once, uh, spoiler alert, can definitely be done deathless. Molten Strike is pretty good and it's worth trying out as a melee skill if you haven't at this point. But so is Wild Strike just for the clear skill, uh, for the clear action rather. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the past couple of videos on this build and I'll see you next time.
I guess I have two sets. So this first set I'll try to start with Ancestral Call. Let's see how we go. I got the right Panthens, I think. Nope! Well. Who needs it? It's for scrubs. Wait, I'm a scrub? Ah, oh, fuck. Um. There's not really much point to that yet. Ancestral Call is the right move here. I really do not know. Kind of doesn't feel like it. Experience. I do get the feeling that uh, the life gain on hit can actually like carry me through a lot of face tank if I let it. Too scared to try. Uh, I have no flasks right now, and it's kind of unfortunate. I thought I could thread that needle, which was wrong. Yeah, I don't want to. Do any more ancestral call for one attempt. I needed to pop the ball and I thought I could thread through the three balls, which was, yeah, I guess a bit wrong. Uh, I'll try no ancestral call. I'm not sure it's good. I do think that that life gain on hit can actually carry me through a lot of face tank, but I, yeah, I don't know if I can afford to try it. I think the life gain on hit's going to be good enough without it. It's not bad. I just went for full face tank just then. to spawn some shit, that's not good. Finish him! Yeah, I can't face tank um, three different attacks there with the life gain on here. Could have done that deathless, eh? But we didn't. Cause shit. 
And I don't know whether Ancestral Call is better or not. All I do know is oh, that's not a jewel. Decently rolled Mark of the Elder, though. 